30,000-pound graphics cards optimized for AI do exist, but you obviously don't need one to run things for yourself. And obviously people know that, but they do still tend to overestimate the hardware requirements. You don't need a chunky GPU, even if it is nice. Be it speech recognition and synthesis on a card-sized computer, running an LLM on a phone, or image generation on a laptop with a GPU with just 6 gigs of VRAM, the requirements for running AI are lowering all the time. Along with, actually, how easy it is to take full advantage of a big computer if you've got one. If there's something in particular you want to learn about, there are chapters in the playback bar, but it's all pretty interesting and this isn't a super long video. Let's start with the Pi. Image generation? It's possible, but really, really slowly. Text gen could be done, quickly even, but only with such small models that the output wouldn't be particularly useful. But voice recognition and speech synthesis are pretty easy to run, and the applications for them on something as small as this are pretty obvious. Be it a self-hosted voice assistant, like my Blueberry series that will be coming back soon and there's a playlist up there, or even just as an accessibility thing for a kiosk or something. Maybe you already have a desktop and just want an isolated environment and this could provide that. Then you can mess around and not have to worry about breaking stuff. And you don't have to be some kind of genius to run it. As long as you're SSH or plugged into a Pi, all you need to do is install Python 3-pip, then pip install faster whisper, write some code and go. The subtitles that you're seeing on screen now were generated faster than real time, as in faster than I am speaking them now, with the smallest, worst OpenAI whisper model on this Raspberry Pi. And although this is a 4 gig model, the actual memory usage shows that you could get by on a 1 gig one. In fact, the whole tiny English model is just 75 megabytes. And also, obviously, you could run this on any other old computer or single board computer. And that storage requirement, along with the RAM usage compared to the multi-gig text and image models, shows why this is so much easier to run. Plus, even on such hardware, without any optimization work from me, I just ran the same code that the demo showed me, it was able to transcribe 392 seconds of audio in 161 seconds. That's 2.4 times faster than I was speaking. If you want to use it on your phone, there's an Android app that just takes 30 seconds of recorded audio and transcribes it, though I'm interested in making a, a more useful app for it myself, so maybe one day I'll add something to that conversation. And if you have a desktop, you can run some huge models that do the same thing fundamentally, but work way better with lower quality audio or accents, that kind of thing. There are also other tools like WhisperX, which combines it with speech diarization so you can get outputs of who was saying what, as opposed to just an output of all the words said by anyone. And there are tools that make making subtitles following videos with it way easier. This isn't just messing with AI, though it is cool to do that. It's a really, really useful model. Just like running an LLM on your phone. I mean, spoiler alert, it's slow, really slow, way slower than ChatGPT or running it on a local GPU or pressing the subscribe button if you're liking the video so far or not. But you might be able to forgive that when you remember it's running on something that's like 6 millimeters thick, is battery powered, and doesn't even need an internet connection. That's the really cool part about running an LLM locally. Later, I want to talk about just how special having a local LLM is on a phone, but first I want to talk about the fact that there are two methods that you can use to get it installed. One is basically the desktop way. It's what a lot of people use on big beefy computers with GPUs, but you can run it on your phone just with a bit of fiddling. But that's Android only. And then there's another which is compatible with desktops, but mainly seems to be used just for running it on phones. And I'm going to do that first since it's the easiest and works on the most platforms. All you need to do is go to their website to get the APK for Android, or you can just get it from the App Store if you've got an iPhone, download one of the currently two available models, and press chat with it and go. It'll, it'll just work. And for most people, that's probably fine. The only reason that you might want something else is because there's not much in the way of customization. And they seem to use a special model format. So if you've done your own customization to a model, you've done some fine tuning and you want to move it over and try it on your phone, you're going to have to run it through a conversion script to make it work on the phone. But the other way is just the same as desktop, which brings us then to llama.cpp. 
that one, the same one that runs on desktop Linux. I'm not going to work you through the build steps in their entirety because Lama.cpp is a project that changed often, whether it be the file format, getting new features and making the old ones not work, or like problems with the program itself. It's really cool and that means it's constantly getting updates, but also things change very often and so a static in video guide wouldn't be very useful. But what will stay the same is that you'll want to get Termux from Fdroid. Termux is an app that lets you access a Linux terminal from your Android phone since Android just is modified Linux, but the one from the Play Store is supposedly different from Fdroid, you're gonna want to get it from Fdroid. Here's a sped up video of me getting it to work on my phone, and there, that is the same interface as on my computer. You can use all of the same options and all of the same models, and it's using OpenCL, so it's even slightly GPU accelerated. I'm not sure how good the acceleration is because it's on a phone, but it works. The main thing you're gonna want to be mindful of though, given you're now supplying your own models, is that Think about the size of them, your phone probably doesn't have too much RAM, even a high-end phone, you know, my phone has 12 gigs of RAM, that's quite a bit for a phone, but still isn't particularly much in terms of LLMs, but it can fit a 7 billion parameter model, and that's probably also the highest you want to go to get any kind of reasonable inference time. Getting back to what I said earlier, the first reason I'd really like to have an LLM on my phone is because it would be really cool to play with an LLM locally on my phone, but the real second reason is because Although you generally shouldn't trust the output of an AI text generator blindly, it can let me search things without an internet connection. And no, it's not very common that I'm without an internet connection, but if you're somewhere rural, if you're somewhere that doesn't have good coverage, it's really nice knowing that even if you should probably be wary of its accuracy, you can search things without needing, you know, the entirety of Wikipedia downloaded, and, you know, even that wouldn't be as useful, I don't think, as an LLM in lots of cases. It could be really helpful sometimes. If you were to run text generation on a Raspberry Pi, you'd probably have a pretty bad time. You'd either be not like those are out of stock everywhere. You'd probably be using such a small model or have such slow response times that it wouldn't be practically useful. But going right to the other end of the spectrum, if you have a GPU, make sure you're using all of it. Like first, I have to give a huge shout out to Lama.cpp's OpenCL support. I didn't know OpenCL was so powerful that you could use it to run LLMs, but it is and it's really quick to set up. If you don't want to go through any dependency hell and you don't want to spend forever trying to get things set up with GPU and you're okay not getting, you know, the absolute most out of it, Lama.cpp compiled with OpenCL support is a great way to get just a quick GPU speed up if it was just using the CPU before. But if you really want to get the absolute most out of your GPU and you're okay with messing, well, if you're on Nvidia, you probably don't have to mess that much. But if you're on AMD and you're okay with jumping through some hoops, the AMD AI GitHub repo was lots of help in that it showed me that PyTorch has nightlies, which those work with the latest version of Rockham, but the stable ones don't. That was the problem I was having before. That helped me fix it. Um, you can get the text generation web UI working with Xlama on AMD or NVIDIA GPUs, even the newest ones, and wow is it fast. Really, really. I thought the CPU versus GPU inference with text gen models weren't that different. That's just because I'd never tried one. And if you're considering buying hardware with the fact that you may be running AI machine learning stuff on it in mind, I'm in two minds about it. On one, NVIDIA is better. It's probably going to be easier to set up for the foreseeable future, but kind of as with everything, if you're willing to put up with a bit more effort in the first place, AMD GPUs are excellent value in general, but also very, very specifically for VRAM per money. A 16 gig AMD GPU is much, much cheaper than the equivalent 16 gig NVIDIA GPU. And if you're having trouble getting things set up with an AMD GPU, there's a conversation I had in the Discord and Matrix server that's in the description, and that might be able to help you. It's in the Linux dev channel. The steps to get Stable Diffusion running on a GPU with a low amount of VRAM for today are not really special. This isn't anything particularly unique, and honestly, for 6 gigs, you probably won't have to do anything special. I just want to point out that you can do lots with just a, a laptop, low-end, mid-range GPU or something. With AI image generation, 
a GPU is a GPU. Like, you won't get 4090 speeds with a GTX 1060, but anything compared to a CPU is huge. Easy Diffusion has a really easy to use installer, it asks you what GPU you have, it has basically no prerequisites other than setting some environment variables if you've got a modern AMD GPU on Linux, and after that you can just pick the VRAM model that works best for you. And it's important to be able to run these models yourself, because although AI output may not be copyrightable, at least until big media companies get to lobby in, um, as long as you're not just uploading the actual raw outputs from these programs, you are transforming that work, and therefore making it copyrightable yourself. So, whether you like it or not, AI content is going to become a thing, and is already kind of, even though I'm not a huge fan. And having potentially core parts of your business reliant on OpenAI's APIs probably isn't the most comfortable thing in the world, and being able to have things locally means having them. So regardless of whether I think AI-generated media is particularly ethical or not, which I will touch on in my next video, it'll be my thousand subscriber special, um, whether I like it or not, it is happening, so I'd rather not have OpenAI have all control over it through their APIs. I would rather people be able to run things themselves. I mean, more decentralization, more better. I've got a Discord and Matrix server in the description. Let me know if you actually use any of these tools and what for. Hopefully you've enjoyed and bye.